we have kinesthetic learners who have to work on something to actually learn auditory learners yep. visual learners and so what, what would you say your biggest one is for you uh visual learning and then hands-on practical experience learning i'm by far a kinesthetic learner and then a visual learner it's hard for me to retain things like just auditorily yeah, I, I forget people's names and you know you know how our our education system is set up right now you know where where sometimes it is almost like just lecture and, you know, no, no interaction. You know, I think one of the reasons why I was really good at mathematics was just because it was like something you learn by doing. The technique that I started using to study, I started turning, you know, B's to like A's on tests and stuff was, um, you know, rewriting my notes. And that does tie into psychology because, you know, that's how you learn things. And many people don't really know how we learn. It's cramming before a test is not really going to work very well for you. You know, it might, you might retain some of the information and do fairly well on the test. It might make a decent score. It might pass, you know, and it might help you get by and it might be easier, but you know, you don't tend to retain that information as much. And there's a reason why it's because the brain just isn't really wired to learn things that way. The way we learn things is through repeated prolonged exposure. And so like, what does that mean? Well, that means um, you, know, you study something a little bit each day um, give or take five to seven days, sometimes maybe four days before like the test or before your goal of learning that thing. And you study not eight hours a day, not four hours a day, but maybe like one to three hours, depending on how much you need to study. At least that's what I did. Like I would study maybe one or two hours a day, five or seven days before an exam. And it would be like so easy. Like I just know it. I just know it, you know, because you, what you're doing with your brain is you're minding yourself each day with the same material each day that this is important like it's almost like you're talking to your subconscious mind in some way like saying hey this is important and when you write stuff down when you highlight things your brain is you're telling your brain you're communicating to your brain that this information is important and if you do it every single day your brain is being exposed to that those those uh, synapses between your neurons are getting strengthened each time you expose yourself to the same information again we learn the most when we're sleeping. That's when the brain learns when we're asleep because that's when all the connections are organized and strengthened. So it's like, yeah, after days and nights of the same information, you're eventually going to just have it yeah. go from short-term to long-term memory. Basically, the 10,000-hour rule, you need 10,000 hours of doing something repetitively to actually become a pro at something. Yes, it's 10,000 hours, but of dedicated learning like focused learning well you know i'm just gonna practice um this one song ten thousand times by ten thousand days you know you'll probably have the song pretty well mastered but maybe you could have learned some other skills that were not on that song uh ten thousand hours of dedicated learning can help you become a master at something and by that i mean like really really taking breaking down what it means to be a master at something and breaking it down into simpler and easy to, yeah. to use steps. If I want to learn how to speak French, at first I have to start learning the words, how to pronounce the words, and then afterwards like create sentences with the words, things that I, I hear from songs or movies and maybe put English subtitles and try to make sense of what, what people are saying. You're talking about different ways of learning the same thing, which that also helps multiple types of exposure. So it's not just about oh, repeated exposure. exposure. Yeah. It's also about multiple types of exposure, like the different ways to expose yourself. Flashcards, yeah. writing notes, highlighting, reading a book, watching stuff with subtitles if you're learning any language. I really learned it pretty well when I was learning something in one class and then I could associate it with another class. I could see oh. the correlation between two different subjects, yes. but they both amplified to be able to understand each other even better. Uh, what you're talking about is elaboration. It's a long-term memory uh, technique. <clears throat> what you're talking about, you're making associations to make remembering it easier. And this is like one of the strongest ways to memorize something that's really kind of abstract or just you're not getting it stuck in your brain. You're adding to the material or changing it in some way to make it to almost like a reminder, like you know, how you have reminders or something. This is where people use memory devices mm. like acronyms, like, you know, acronyms, like to remember. Yeah. Or you uh, make a joke with your uh, 
with your classmates yeah. about it. Or yeah, you make it personal in some way. Like I remember this thing because it's then it reminds me of this character from my favorite movie. And that usually works because then what you're doing theoretically, what they say you're doing is you already have a strong established memory connection in your brain of something familiar to you, like a, your favorite movie character going with that example. So when you're trying to learn something new, that's really abstract and hard to remember. And you find a way to connect that with some type of similarity between the two. You're taking a weak memory and you're strengthening it by connecting it and anchoring it to a strong memory that's already established in your brain. So of course, it's like, it's like almost like hooking a line from your strong memory to the weak one. And then it's easier to remember now, you know, because you just think about that strong one and it just comes to you. It sets off a chain reaction. I've also heard that it really helps when you study, you should study during nighttime. You know, your, your brain is starting, like what it does during sleep, it organizes thoughts or ideas that you've had throughout the day. Mm-hmm. And so that also includes new information, right? It, it starts, you know, associating that with other aspects of life, making uh, narrow connections between different things. And so I think that's primarily why people say like, well, you should study uh, at least two to three hours before you you sleep because that's where those thoughts and the, that new information will be organized in your head, right? Right, exactly. Makes sense because um, it, it, there's, there's some, something interesting about 